weekend, um, during the week I managed to get hold of uh, a couple of Keymax cutters. These two there, which I'm going to use now to uh, start cutting some holes in the HLT and the boil kettle. Um, I first saw the Qmac cutters online, um, saw them being used just to cut um, thin sheet. They looked pretty clever and I wondered whether they'd work on um, beer cakes because drilling the holes of the beer cakes looks like at times it can be a bit hard work. Um, weren't sure whether they'd sort of be up to the job really. Um, and then just by chance uh, I saw that the Norfolk Hillbilly had used the Qmac cutter um, and it looked really good. So done a bit more research. They say they go up to 1.6 uh, mil in stainless steel, which isn't far off of what a beer keg is, I guess. So today we're uh, we cut through them with that, um, <coughs> and we give it a go. Right here are the Qmax cutters. Um, I've got one 21 mil, um, and that will be used for cutting the holes for the fittings. And then I've got a 15 mil cutter um, to cut for the holes for my element. This is a two kilowatt heating element, um, stainless steel. It says, hopefully, um, looks reasonably well made, but only time will tell. For the boil kettle, um, I'm planning on having the tap at the bottom with a dip tube and that will go underneath um, a false bottom or filter type thing. I'm not really sure what I'm doing there yet. And then to the right of that is going to be a sight glass. If you look from the top, you'll have the tap at the front. You'll have the sight glass to the right of that. And a thermo well, I'm thinking of sticking at 90 degrees to the tap. And then the two elements will go at the back. As I mentioned before, I've got these these two elements. If you imagine the keg there, if I put these elements like that, it's going to be quite difficult to get a seal because of the angle. So what my thoughts were is if I invert that like there, then there's only a very small radius across here to try and seal which can be flattened fairly easily. So the HLT, you can still see that all right, there we go. The HLT is gonna, um, gonna have a few more fittings in it. We're gonna have the sight glass on the left, the tap in the middle. We've got a Herms coil which I wanna put in there. And then I'm gonna put a fill port um, so we can fill it up from the tap. So I'll be running on a hose, I guess. Um, probably run that through a water filter as well and then into the HLT um, and when we're not filling it I'll take that tap off uh, the connector off and to try and keep the temperature even we, we drain the tank through um, through a pump and then come in up on the fill so that we can circulate the water through the HLT hopefully keeping an even temperature I may or may not need to do that, I'm not really sure till we get the setup working. So a plan view, you'd have the tap at the front, um, the sight glass to the left with a the thermo well in there as well, and then the two elements. Right, with element safety, um, obviously watching brew tube um, and uh, watching a um, Tom from New to Homebrew Tom and he had an issue with his element he um, drained the water out and still had the element on which damaged an element and then was wondering how we can get over it there's a, a few little safety features I suppose we can put on we could put a um, maybe a little alarm on there to tell us when the water level drops below the element um, I thought of a, maybe something a little bit more simple. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But I'll give it a go. 
from where our tap comes out on the side of the keg our heat element is represented there if we have a dip tube that comes down to the bottom of the keg normally to allow us to drain everything out of the keg now that's fine on the uh, boil kettle so we turn the element off before we drain that but with the HLT we're going to be taking uh, hot liquor from that um, through the brewing process so with our mind on that we may forget about the element and the element still being on so my idea is if the dip tube rotates and we rotate it through 90 degrees so the dip tube then sort of goes up as long as that takes its fill from above the element then the element shouldn't never um, run dry the water level should drop down get to there and then stop obviously at the end of the brew day when we want to clean everything out um, we're going to want to take all the liquid out of the HLT so once the water's cooled in there we can turn that round through 90 degrees onto the bottom and then just turn on the tap and then uh, there should be enough pressure there to get the flow and then it should stop when it's completely empty so that's the plan for mine we'll see how it works out when it's all together and things may change when it's all uh, up and running that might not work but we'll give it a go right there we go i've unboxed the qmax cutter that's what he looks like um it's probably better for you so there's in several pieces we undo this i'm hoping it's going to be good quality it's got qmax written on it so hopefully it's not a copy We've essentially got that piece there, which has got three prongs on it. They're not sharp. And that goes into that cylinder there. Right, we're just enlarging the hole, just with a twist bit. So I'll take that bit from the inside and this from the outside. That drops through OK. Alright, it's lined up. I've got a ratchet on here just to make life a little bit easier. And there we go. I think it'll be a bit tight with just an Allen key. Is. Oh, there we go, one click. Not too difficult. There's a click, three clicks. Wow. That is neat. That hole is very neat. And not a lot of effort there. From the inside that is really smooth. The outside's got the tiniest of burr on that, which I just clean up. But that is very, very neat, very impressed. As I said, I first seen this used by the Norfolk Hillbilly. It looked good. I'll take it apart. That's what it takes out. Very neat, very quick, very easy. Right, I should carry on with the others. And we'll see where we are.
So I can highly recommend the Qmax cutter for cutting holes in the beer kegs. And that's the little fella. Right, I've just started marking out for the heating element. This is the type that I bought. <coughs> it's a two kilowatt, 220 volt um, heating element. I'm looking, this is the HRM boil kettle. So I'm looking at putting two in here. Um, kind of one of the reasons why I want two elements um, is if one of the elements fails at any point, then you've still got your second one, so you've got a backup. Um, it was fairly cheap. I've got another one on order from China, which is where this one come from. Just hoping that they're going to be good, good enough quality that you don't know till you, you plug them in, I suppose. So as the element's going to go sort of in this orientation, um, <coughs> It's going to stop me taking the. I can only put liquid up to about this point here as a minimum from the bottom, which I suppose is probably going to be about 18 litres, maybe. Um, obviously, we can have liquid up to the top, but this will need to be submerged when it's running. So, what I've done is I've measured from here, come central. Uh, so it's 90 degrees to the bottom and I've measured these two points here which are 48 millimetres on mine. So we're going to put a circle mark at 48 millimetres. I've kept it as low as I can on this first one. My first thought when we crossed them inside the boil pot, so we can have one sort of this angle and one going that angle. My idea is that we kind of stagger it so that one of the, these rails sort of cross. But looking at where this is, I'm not actually sure we're going to achieve that. Because of the size of it, because one's got to go down at the bottom and I don't think we're going to be able to lift the second one up high enough to create that, to, to cross at that point. But we'll see. I've got it now, so I'm going to go with it. I'll just drill these holes. They're marked there. Drill the holes and then uh, see what it looks like when it's in. When I do the HLT, um, I might look at another type of element. I didn't really want to use the washing machine um, type elements because you've got to cut a, quite a piece out then to seal, although it seems quite successful cutting it out and sealing um, now where we're gonna run um, where we're gonna drill just a little center punch I haven't got a center punch so I've just got a screw so fairly hard found that this is very slightly too small for the um, threads. don't know why. Maybe I got one a little bit too small. Probably did. So what I'm going to do is file out these holes. Just a little bit. It's only a quarter of a mil really. The trouble is I don't have a file. <coughs> so what I've done is wrapped a piece of this abrasive uh, cloth back paper or cloth back uh, abrasive around the drill bit, held it in the drill chuck and then what I'm going to do, pop it in there, as long as I spin it that way so that that's the trailing edge, we should be alright, works very well with wood, let's give it a go with metal. There we go, a 
fit. Right then, we're pretty much done for today. Um, I'm just waiting for some fittings for the kegs. Once I've got the fittings, I can then start putting them on. Um, need some stainless steel washers as well. And um, probably some rubber seals. I might try O-rings first. Or get the uh, oven proof braking sheet, the silicon type that lots of people have been using. Um, the Qmax cutter, absolute bit, brilliant bit of kit. So pleased with that, it's made life really easy getting them holes in the kegs. Um, when I come to do the uh, electric control panel, um, I've got some ideas with that, but essentially the front's going to be uh, a piece of sheet metal. Um, so definitely going to get some Qmax cutters for cutting them for the switches etc. Um, as I say it's gone really well. I'm going to carry on with all this. Um, so if you like what I'm doing please subscribe. And thanks very much for watching.